In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a very simple iPhone application using a table view and core data. To follow along, you'll need an app delegate, a table view controller, and a data model. Start off in the app delegate by importing the table view controller. We then display the table view on screen by making it a sub view of the window. In the table view controller, we're going to add a mutable array that will contain the data displayed in the list. In view did load, we'll allocate and initiate this array and add some data. In this demonstration, I'm going to display some video game consoles. In view or appear, I'm going to add a simple output to the log so I can see this is working. I'm going to list how many entries are in the array and the first item in the array. This table view will only have one section so we'll hard code it to one. For the number of rows in this section, we'll count the number of items in the array. In self row at index path, we're going to set the text label for the table cell to the string contained in the array list at this position. Index path will give us the position of the cell. You can now see that the table view is displaying the contents of the array in the order they were added. But what if we wanted to use a database as our data source? In the data model, add a new entity to contain the consoles and an attribute containing its name. Back in the app delegate, we're going to add some methods that will allow other objects to interact with core data. First, we will override the init method in the app delegate so that we can create a reference to this object that can be shared to others. Obviously, we must make sure that we do not create more than one. Next, we will create a method that will return this reference. Finally, we need a method that will query the database and return all the consoles to list in our table view. To do this, we first get a reference to the managed object context and then create a fetch request with it. Here we give the request the name of the entity we wish to query. Next we'll create a sort which orders the results by the name attribute ascending and then apply it to the fetch request. Finally, we attempt the request and log any error to the output.
If we are successful, we return an array of managed objects. Back in the Table View Controller, we can now use this to query core data. First, import the app delegate. Next, in view did load, we'll use the method we created to get a reference to the instance of app delegate. We'll then use our other method to query the database and return instances of managed objects to an array list. Let's log the output here so we can see the result. If this returned no results, let's use the code we've already written to insert some test data. Once we've done this, we re-query the database to receive the information we've just inserted. The results can then be copied into the array list the table view is already using as its data source. Let's log the output again so that we can see how many results should be now displayed. All that remains is to update how the table view reads the data source. The array list now returns NS managed objects, which you need to use value for key to return the attribute you desire, in this case, name. And there you have it, a table view using core data as its data source. You can now see the items are listed alphabetically because of the sort.